Hi, my name is Eddie Jackson Jr. And this is Real True Street Crime. And I want to do this one right here for one of my viewers. He asked me who was Black Magic, and I want to introduce the whole world of Black Magic because that's a beautiful question, brother. Black Magic was a beautiful brother, brother. And I want to introduce you to him and let you know William Harmon was Black Magic. Black Magic was William Harmon. We had two magics. We had Irvin Magic Johnson, and we had William Harmon Black Magic. We had two magics. One was called Black Magic William Harmon, and the other one was Irvin Magic Johnson. I'm sure you know who he is. But let me give you the William Harmon story. William Harmon came up on the east side of Detroit on Harding and Mack. And goddamn, William Harmon went a long way in the basketball world. Now, William Harmon went up to Oakland. They starting to get a lot of recognition now out there in Oakland County. That was the college he went to at first. When he went there, his game was so tough, a coach by the name of Dutch in Minnesota saw William Harmon playing out there in OCC, and he recruited William Harmon to come to Dutch. And William Harmon said, I knew it was going to Dutch when Dutch gave him $1,500 to come to Minnesota. Understand what Dutch paid William Harmon at that time to come to Minnesota to play basketball with Kevin McHale, who loved hockey, and Michael Thompson was to star the team. And at that time, Michael Thompson had a shirt on that said, what's a million dollars? Because he had just turned a million dollars down to go in the NBA. But he decided to come back to Minnesota to play his last year with motherfucking Kevin Muscale and William Harmon was coming in the door. William, uh, William Harmon, baby, black magic. Ask Michael Thompson about this, brother. And you ask Kevin McHale about William Harmon because they was his teammates. And you talk to Bernard King because he say him and Bernard King put a motherfucking show on down there at Cobo Hall that was for the ages. He said Bernard King them beat them by one point, and he said the referees was cheating. You know all of us sports junkies, the referee cheated us out of it. But Bernard King and him had a fierce battle down there at Cobo Hall. Understand that. So now, William has been recruited by Dutch, his teammates, like I told you, is Kevin McHale and Magic Johnson. His coaches, his teammates was Kevin McHale and Michael Thompson, that boy's daddy down there at Golden State. Michael Thompson is the boy who played for Golden State's daddy. That was William Harmon's roommate. And he said Michael Thompson at that time before he ever went into the NBA, he was already rich. Michael Thompson, before he even went to the NBA, he was already rich, William said. William said Michael Thompson used to keep his money on the goddamn flow. Michael Thompson used to have so much money, William said he'd take the envelope and just throw it in the closet on the floor and just leave when he needs so he just go in there and pick up an envelope off the floor. Michael Thompson had money already. And William Harmon said he wore bells on his gym shoes. They used to call him bells. Said they used to call Michael Thompson Bell, and they used to call Kevin McHale Eddie the Monster. Said he come riding up on that bike with a hockey club because they say Kevin McHale could have went pro in hockey or basketball. But he wound up going down there with Larry Bird and Chief. My boy, the Chief down there in Boston. So Williams' main man is Kevin McHale, Eddie the Monster, who's a hockey player also, world class, down there in Minnesota. And he got Michael Thompson out the islands as his goddamn roommate. Dutch made him and Michael Thompson roommates. That made Williams' goddamn life to be Michael Thompson's roommate. Shit. He hit the lottery that day. Trust me, he hit the lottery when Michael Thompson became his roommate. And Dutch would regret that shit. He got the star of the team, Michael Thompson, out. And after our joints and shit, they get raided. Michael Thompson so goddamn famous, they escort him out the after our joint. What the fuck is you doing here? 
That goddamn William Harvey got Michael Thompson in the after hour joint. These things in that calling in the after hour joint get raided. And they escort Michael Thompson out there because he's the heart of goddamn Minnesota. This is the heart of Minnesota. Michael, he got him in the goddamn after hour joint. In the after hour joint get raided. That goddamn William Harvey. So now, he and Michael Thompson, them they roommates. William smoking cools at this time, and Michael Thompson didn't smoke. And William smoking cigarettes killing Michael. And Michael had to go to Dutch. Dutch, that goddamn William killing me with them cigarettes. Now, he didn't got Michael Thompson caught up in the after hour joint now. He didn't been caught busted, redheaded. Fuck it, it's all William Harmon's ideal. Oh, come on, man, let's go down into that. That's that street shit. Understand? That boy used to bring the streets there. Now, remember, Dutch Schultz is the goddamn coach of the team. The assistant coach is Flip Saunders, who would later on become the coach of the Detroit Pistons. What'd he do that for? When William C. Flip Saunders was the coach of the Pistons, hey, we got to go out here and see Flip, my man. God damn it, I got to go get me a few dollars for Flip, because Flip didn't hit the goddamn lottery. Now, when Kevin McHale come to town, he got Kevin McHale leaving him money and tickets at the desk for him. Kevin McHale will leave that nigga a stack and tickets to come to the game. Michael Thompson come to the town. He do the same thing that Mike leave me a little money down there with a couple tickets so I can come to the game. So anytime Kevin McHale and Michael Thompson came to town, we go into the goddamn game. Compliments of Kevin McHale and Michael Thompson. One time we out there waking up, waiting on Michael Thompson to come like to the lobby. You know, the, 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 the basketball teams, they pretty much had a hotel, the whole hotel. So William, by him knowing Magic Johnson, understand, William said he had a gift. He could count. When you dribble, he could count and he could strip you. He stripped Magic Johnson. If you think I'm lying, I'm flying, and you ask Magic Johnson if what I'm saying ain't true. The great Irving Magic Johnson, there was two of Magic and Black Magic, William Harmon, and both of them was all goddamn Americans. Understand that both of them was all American. Now, we going out here to catch up to Michael Thompson. Magic see William waiting out here, and he couldn't get back here where the players at. So Magic say, Black, Black Magic, come on in. Magic Johnson took him back there with the team. Magic Johnson took William Harmon back there with the team to see Michael Thompson. Understand that, because Black Magic knew who he was. I mean, Magic Johnson knew who he was. They didn't play together. William didn't strip him out there on the court. You strip Magic Johnson, motherfucker, you doing something. Understand that. And at that time, Bernard King, he had a hell of a game. He went up against Dr. Duncan Stein, had pictures and shit, all of this. He was number 19 at Minnesota. Know that. Number motherfucking 19, straight out of Detroit City. Off the east side, straight out the streets. Understand this. It was three of them. Southeastern's finest. And I don't think yet Southeastern had, had any three finer than these three. And all three of these motherfuckers, William said, was fuck ups. Reggie Harding, Cyrus Mann, and William Harmon. He said all three of us was fuck ups, man. All three of us. Reggie Harding. Cyrus Mann and William Harmon was all teammates at one time. William was the youngest. Reggie Harding was leading the way. Understand that at one time when William was a freshman, Reggie Harmon was his teammate and Cyrus Mann was his teammate. Understand that Southeastern that went to the NBA. Reggie Harding, what he do? Go get killed breaking in a motherfucker house. He's seven foot tall trying to climb through a goddamn window like that and the man killed his big ass and he playing for the Pistons. He is in the league at this time. And let me tell y'all this. George Gervin is who recruited Kenny, which was William Harmon's brother. Baby Harmon. He used to call William Baby Harmon. And Kenny, he recruited to go to his college which I believe was uh, uh, up there south something. But Kenny, William Harmon's brother, played against Larry Bird. Understand that George Gervin done recruited Kenny. Kenny playing against Larry Bird. 
Kenny go do a monster slam on Larry Bird and say, get these nuts. He slammed on Larry Bird viciously and said, get these nuts, Larry. And that's when Larry and them was undefeated. What'd he do that for? Slam in Larry Bird's face and tell him to get his nuts? Nigga, I'm finna tear your ass up by the roots. After Kenny did that shit, Larry Bird went off, nigga. Larry Bird went off. Nigga, that's the only slam you gonna do. He was like motherfucking Michael Jordan. You do some shit like that to Larry Bird, nigga, he finna come and glaze your ass with that set goddamn three-pointer. Larry Bird lit their ass up after Kenny dunked on nigga, that nigga and told him, get these nuts. Got all the way up on him, Larry Bird nuts down there. And his, he, Kenny was so high, Larry Bird faced down there and Kenny nuts. And Kenny tell him, get these nuts, nigga. And slammed on Larry Bird. God damn it, Larry Bird came back and tore their ass up. By the roots. You fucking with Larry the Legend, nigga. You might get one slam and you might get one laugh. But I done told y'all, he who laughed first don't always laugh the loudest or last. Larry Bird laughed the loudest and last because he won the goddamn game. Kenny got one goddamn dunk and Larry got the most valuable play. Which one you want? So anyway, my boy George Gervin was they main man. Iceman George Gervin was their main man. That was their hero. And he said, Baby Harmon, you always be schooling with Baby Harmon. You're going to be a muffler. That's what you just call William Harmon, Baby Harmon. So their main man was George the Iceman Gervin, man. And they say George Gervin's brother was colder than him, but he happened to have been an alcoholic and washed out. But they say that motherfucking George Gervin's brother, man, was colder than him, but he was fucking around there, an alcoholic, and didn't make it, but they say motherfucker George Gervin got his shit from his brother. I'm telling you what they say, George Gervin, brother was worse than him. Now, I got to find up this goddamn Why You Gully? This some new shit out. Why You Gully? And I got to get some goddamn fire to find out Why You Gully. So give me one second to step right in here and get me a lighter so I can fire up Why You Gully. And let y'all know how, why you gully is. So I got to go get me a lighter. So I come back here and fire this why you gully up and finish the story. Because you know I'm smoking a lot and I got to have my goddamn smoke now. This is why you gully. And we got to fire it up. That's pretty good, but I put a little of this cream and cream wax on it so it really tastes good. That motherfucking creamy cream wax with this why you gully. Boy, that shit tastes good. But let me just finish telling you this. Boy, that why you gully tastes pretty good. Man, that moment that tastes pretty good. That'll open you up in the morning, man. But anyway, let me say this to go ahead on and bring it on down to a quiet hour. William Harmon, as I told y'all, he said he was one of three fuck-ups. Reggie Harding, Cyrus Mann, and him. And he said Reggie Harding and Cyrus Mann fucked up so bad he didn't get in the NBA. But that wasn't the truth. William Harmon didn't get in the goddamn NBA because he was going out for the Pistons. Dick Vitale was the coach. Ask Dick Vitale if what I'm saying is not true. Dick Vitale was the coach of the Pistons. William Harmon came out with Dick Vitale. In the tryouts, he scored all 10s. But here's where William Harmon fucked up at. He was just like Allen Iron. Didn't think he had to practice. He missed two practices. And see, what killed William Harmon by missing them two practices, he got cut. He didn't make the NBA. He had all perfect 10s and missed two fucking practices. And you know what they say about practice. Practice make perfect, and you can't miss practice. So William Harmon got cut because he missed two practices when he was trying out for the Detroit Pistons, and Dick Vitale was the coach. And William would always blame Cyrus Mann, and he could only blame himself. Cyrus, you fucked up so bad when you went up there and fell out with Red Allvac. So them niggas from Southeastern had a bad rep 
in the NBA. Cyrus go up there. He get drafted by the great red all back Boston Celtics. What you think he do? Soon as he signed the contract, the very first day, he take Bob Cougies, brand new Cadillac. He said, Bob, can I borrow your car for a minute? He take Bob Cougies' Cadillac and drive all the way back to Detroit to get some dope. He asked this man to borrow his car, and he took this man's car all the way back to the projects of Detroit to get some goddamn dope. You just been drafted by the Boston Celtics, Red Orvac. And the first thing you do is take Bob Cousy's Cadillac and come back to Detroit to get some dope so you know how that's going to wind up. He ran a muck with Red Orvac. He wind up going out of the country to play over there in Japan, China, Tokyo. He go to play over there. Okay, that league. He go over there, and they had to rush him out the goddamn country because they finna assassinate Cyrus Mann. Now, he didn't care his big seven-foot-two ass all the way over here to Tokyo, Japan. Now, he's point-shaving. Now, he didn't care his big ass over there, and they got caught up in a point-shaving scandal. Now, they got to rush him out the goddamn country because they finna behead this motherfucker. You over here shaving points? Man, Cyrus got caught up in a vicious point-shaving scandal overseas. And they had to rush him out of there because if they didn't, he was going to be overboard overseas because they was out for his motherfucking head. They say one of the head honcho mafiosos over there had lost his money fucking with Cyrus. And he was going to behead Cyrus' ass. So they had to rush Cyrus' ass out of there. So he left out of there in an awful bad way. Come back to America. He went play for Denver for a minute. Fucked up down there getting high. As he said, hey, baby, I used to come out there high. And he said, I'm going to tell you something. And tell all these young kids this one day when I might be gone and dead. He said, when you get high on cocaine or drugs, it give you a... 15-minute rush. You go out there in the game and you be a star for the first 15 minutes. But after that, you be trying to get back to the locker room to get another hit. See, he said a lot of these goddamn NBA players doing the same thing I was doing, but they ain't going to tell you that shit. Nick come out there hyped up off that cocaine. Nick come down off that shit. He be trying to work his way for halftime some other time so he can get back there and get him another hit of that shit. Get him another hit of that motherfucker cocaine, come back up there. You know what Hollywood Henderson, who used to play for the Dallas Cowboys, said. The more money I made, the more money the cocaine man made. Hollywood Henderson, famous to the motherfucker for the Dallas Cowboys, had a cocaine joint like most of your athletes did. Sugar Ray Lennon. Eric Money was the bag man for the Detroit Pistons. Eric Money was the bag man. And he was the bag man for a whole lot of motherfuckers who played in the NBA. His name was Eric Money, and he was handling the bag. And he was the bag man would travel with, he was a player on the team, and he was selling too. So if you need a hookup, just holler at Eric Money at halftime in the goddamn locker room, because he got it right there for you. Understand that Eric Money, y'all remember the old Eric Money? But I'm telling y'all about my man Black Magic. Down there in Minnesota, he said when Dutch gave him that goddamn 1500 he knew that was the place for him. He said, shit, it wasn't no question that I got that 1500 where I was going. And William Harmon used to always say, I like to shoot them motherfuckers from the locker room. God damn it, and this is the last one I'm going to leave y'all on William Harmon. And if anybody can possibly do it, check him out and say and test what he said is true. He said, in my day, there was no three-point line. He said, in my day, it wasn't no three-point line. But if you take one of my old videotapes, and there are plenty of them where I played at Cobo Hall. He said, I was trying to get a hold of some. If you take my tapes where I played at Cobo Hall against Bernard King, and you take on the basketball court, and you mark where a three-point line would be, and you look where I shot from every shot, I was shooting threes every time. But back then, you only got two for three.
See, y'all don't remember when it wasn't no goddamn three-point line in the NBA. But William Harmon do. He remember when it wasn't no three-point line in college. But William Harmon do. And I'm sure Magic Johnson remember when it wasn't no goddamn three-point line. Ask Magic. When did they put the three-point line in the NBA game? That's the question of the day. My brother out there, and I got to say what's happening to uh, Thurman Shelton. Thurman Shelton. Thank you for the cash app, my brother. And we will always be hollering out anybody who give Eddie Baby a cash app. Look out for him because I got to look out for you. So my man Thurman Shelton. I had to give a special request today because they asked me who was Black Magic as George Gervin, who was Black Magic. Ask Kevin McHale, who was Black Magic. Ask Michael Thompson, who was Black Magic. Ask Magic Johnson, who was Black Magic. So cash out, Eddie Baby, subscribe, share, like, and thank you too. And Black Magic was... William Harmon, straight off of Harding and motherfucking Mac, Mac's finest. Black magic, William Harmon, straight off of Harding and motherfucking Mac. And that Salvation Army on the corner of Mac and Harding that they closed down, that motherfucking place there is a legend. It should have stayed open forever as the goddamn Salvation Army because some motherfucking real legends had came through that place right there. That motherfucking Salvation Army, that little place there on the corner of Harding and Mac is legendary. And I'm going to tell y'all some stories about it because all kind of motherfuckers that have been in that place, man. Trust what I'm telling you. All kind of motherfucking celebrity stars, up and coming hoop basketball players. One of them Another Southeastern legend spoke at William Harmon funeral, had won a championship and everything. And he came to speak about William Harmon. Earl Curitan came to William Harmon's funeral to speak for William Harmon. So if you know Earl Curitan, ask him who was Black Magic, a brother by the name of William Harmon of Mac and Hardy. A legend over there on the east side. Ask Earl Curden about William Harmon. Ask Magic Johnson about William Harmon. Ask Kevin McHale about William Harmon. Ask Michael Thompson about William Harmon. And ask Magic Johnson about William Harmon. Ask Dr. Duncan Stein about William Harmon. Ask Bernard King about Black Magic William Harmon. Straight off the east side of Detroit. And finally, ask Dick Vitale about William Harmon. Peace out. Cash out. 80 Baby 22. And this just for you. Who is William Harmon? Who is Black Magic? That's my father the legend, William Harmon. And I got to tell you, number 19 at Minnesota, Dutch was his man. And Flip Saunders would become the coach of the Pistons. Now, Flip... Got to check it in, baby. We going out there to get us a couple dollars. And Flip Hanlon now, he the head coach of the Detroit Pistons. And in Williams' day, he was the assistant coach for Dutch, Michael Thompson, and Kevin McHale. And he was later on going to be the coach of the Detroit Pistons. So as I say, rest in peace, Flip Saunders. And thank you for the tickets, my brother. Rest in peace, Flip Saunders. And thank you for all the tickets that you gave us. Peace and love, and thank you all. Rest in peace, Flip Saunders. Rest in peace, William Harmon. Peace out. Cash app, Eddie Baby 22 Subscribe, share, like, and look right down below you. Thank you, too. And as I say, look right down below you. America, real, true street crime on Patreon, and we finna heat it up, but I got the honor of request, one of my loyal subscribers say, hey, baby, who is Black Magic, and I got to tell you who Black Magic is, and I got to fire up this Why You Gully, but damn, you see that shit there ain't playing, it ain't taking no prisoners, Why You Gully, so as I say, I'm gonna fire this Why You Gully up, 
Move on out the way. Let you get on with your Saturday afternoon. And as I say, go Lions. And as I say, rest in peace, my love, my brother, Black Magic, William Arm. Rest in peace. Salute to William Harmon. Peace out.